So there I was, 24-year-old me, smack in the middle of what feels like the biggest family drama of my life. And honestly, it's got me feeling all sorts of stressed out. My family's painting me as the villain here, saying I'm all about me, me, me. But that's just not how it is. And I'm really hoping to get some outside perspective to help me navigate through this mess. Let's rewind a bit to about seven years ago. Picture this. I'm living with my dad, my stepmom, and occasionally my stepsister Anna, who's 32, drops by to say hi. I had just wrapped up high school, and I was at this major crossroads, trying to figure out what comes next. College was calling my name. I could feel it. I'd been dreaming of campus life, the books, the new friends, everything. So, I sit down with my dad, lay my cards on the table, and tell him college is where I see myself heading. Dad seemed cool with it. More than cool, actually. He drops this bombshell that he's been stashing away cash for my college fund. All I needed was that golden ticket, a college acceptance letter. Fast forward a bit and bam, I get the letter. I'm in. I made it into one of the local community colleges and I'm over the moon. I race home, bursting through the door, ready to share the epic news with my dad. But the scene I walked into was nothing like what I'd pictured. My stepmom's there, and the moment I spill the beans about college, she jumps in with this total mood killer. Turns out, the money that was earmarked for my college dreams? Gone. Spent on something they deemed more urgent. And she's saying this like it's no big deal, suggesting I just hit pause on my dreams and wait another year. I'm standing there, my excitement turning to disbelief, turning to my dad, desperately hoping he's got a different story. But nope, he's just nodding along, looking like he's about to walk the plank. My heart sank. I mean, here I was, ready to take on the world, and suddenly, it's like someone pulled the rug out from under me. I muster every ounce of courage I've got and ask my dad straight up, what could possibly be so urgent that my college fund, my future, had to take the back seat? And that's where things got really complicated. So there I was, having a heart-to-heart -heart with my dad, expecting some kind of reasonable explanation for why my college fund had vanished into thin air. And what does he tell me? They handed over all that cash to Anna, my stepsister, so she could upgrade her living situation. Like, seriously? Now let me paint you a picture of Anna. She's from my stepmom's previous adventure, before she hooked up with my dad. And Anna? She's always been kind of a wild card, to the point where she didn't even finish high school because she was just too out there. Fast forward to the present, and Anna's 25, about to welcome twins into the world, making it a grand total of four kids, all with different dads who've basically ghosted her. When I found out they used my college savings for her, I was floored. I couldn't keep it in. I told my dad straight up that what they did was straight up unfair. Their excuse? Well, Anna's expecting again, twins this time, and as a single mom with three other kids to boot, they felt like they had to do something to help her out. I'm standing there trying to wrap my head around this logic, asking my dad how in the world they could think this was more important than my future, my dreams of going to college. He basically told me to calm down and just reapply next year. That got me thinking, what if Anna decides to have another kid next year? Am I supposed to put my life on hold again? Dad didn't have anything to say to that, leaving me even more frustrated. So I spent that whole night just letting it all out, crying because I felt so betrayed. They were so set on making Anna's life a bit easier that they didn't think twice about throwing my plans and dreams under the bus. But lying there, feeling sorry for myself, wasn't going to cut it. I knew I had to do something, especially since I nailed my final exams. That's when it hit me. Why not look for colleges that offer scholarships? I was determined not to let this bump in the road stop me. I started searching for any and every scholarship opportunity I could find. I was ready to take my future into my own hands and not let anyone else dictate what I could or couldn't do. So yeah, that's the game plan. I'm going all in, chasing those scholarships and making sure I get to college, come what may. So guess what? I actually got into one of those fancy colleges far away from my hometown, and they even gave me a full ride. Yeah, a complete scholarship covering everything. That was my golden ticket out of there. I packed my bags and left without making a big deal about it. I was so over dealing with folks who thought it was cool to ditch my future for someone who couldn't care less about anyone else's. After I took off, my dad tried to call me a couple of times, but honestly, I was like, nah, you should spend that time with your precious grandkids instead. I was totally fine with just moving on and not looking back. Fast forward seven years and a lot has happened. I finished college, landed a pretty sweet job in the same state I went to school in, and worked there for three years. But get this, just last month, my company decided to send me back to my home state to work at our main office. Talk about a full circle, right? I got everything sorted and moved back last week. Now here's where things get interesting. Just a few days after I got back, my stepmom hits me up, 
using my uncle's phone because, yup, I had blocked her number years ago. She drops this bombshell on me. Anna left her kids, who are now 6, 9, 10, and 12 years old, and they haven't seen her since she bounced. My stepmom's trying to pull me into their mess, saying they need my help with the kids. I was like, hold up, what? You're kidding, right? She goes on about how my dad's retired now and she's not working, so they're struggling to take care of the kids and want me to take them in. I couldn't believe what I was hearing and shut that down real quick. She tried to guilt trip me, calling me heartless and wicked for saying no, but I clapped back telling her I'm doing way better than her daughter, who ditched her own kids. I even asked her, would you be asking Anna to take in kids if the roles were reversed and I was the one who left? She didn't have much to say after that. So yeah, that's the drama I'm dealing with right now. After everything that's happened, it's like I've come full circle, but now I'm the one they're trying to drag into their mess. But I've learned a thing or two about standing my ground, especially when it comes to family drama that tries to pull you back into the chaos you worked so hard to leave behind. So here's the deal. I had this convo with my stepmom where I was like, look, if my dad can go ahead and blow my college fund on Anna thinking he's doing the noble thing, that's his choice. But me? I'm not about to play superhero and take in a whole crew of kids that Anna, who hasn't exactly been mother of the year, decided she couldn't handle. I was super clear that Anna had already tried to wreck my future once with her drama, and there was no way I was letting her or her mess mess up my life again. Let's be real. Anna probably took off because she knew having a bunch of kids would make her dating life pretty much non-existent. I straight up told my stepmom to stop calling me and maybe try to track down Anna instead, to maybe knock some common sense into her. Then I was wondering, does this make me the bad person in this story? But then, out of nowhere, my dad gives me a call a few days later. He actually said he was sorry for pretty much ghosting me all those years, not even bothering to check in while I was battling through college on my own. Hearing him say sorry, and I mean really mean it, kind of hit me hard. So I decided to let go of the past and forgive him. Now flipping back to the whole Anna saga, she tried to pull a fast one by bringing this dude home, telling everyone he was ready to put a ring on it. But here's where it gets juicy. The kids come home, super excited to see their mom, and everything just explodes. My stepmom, without thinking, spills the beans to the guy about Anna being a mom. The guy freaks out and hits the road. Now, Anna and her mom are in this epic fallout, with Anna blaming her for her ruined love life. And my stepmom? She's totally clueless about why she's getting all the heat and just wants Anna to take her kids back already. Meanwhile, I'm over here making plans to find a chill spot for my dad to live, far away from this whole soap opera. I figured it's the least I could do for him, considering all the past drama. As for my stepmom and Anna, I'm done. I'm just focusing on making sure my dad gets to enjoy some peace for once. He might not have been perfect, but at the end of the day, he's still my dad. So am I the jerk? Story two. So here's the thing. My wife and I had been together for a whole decade, and then, out of the blue, she cheats. Picture this. It's just a regular Thursday afternoon. I had come back from work, hopped in the shower, and was just chilling in bed next to my wife, trying to shake off the day's stress. She had a shift coming up soon, so she got up to get ready and headed into our master bedroom. I'm just lying there, scrolling through TikTok, not thinking much of anything, when I get this text from a number I don't recognize. The message is asking if I'm me, using my name and everything. I'm like, yeah, that's me. Then they ask again, making sure they've got my full name right, and I confirm. That's when they drop this bomb on me, saying they're really sorry, but they've got to tell me that my wife's been cheating on me, and they've got texts to prove it. This person sends me screenshots of conversations where my wife is talking to someone about how she's got this coworker who can't seem to keep his hands to himself. She's joking around, saying she's created a little monster, and talking about how she'd never go for a coworker, especially one who's married. But then, oops, turns out she's been having an affair with some random guy and even bragging about it to him. She's in these texts, telling this guy that if they live closer, she might have taken things further. So, yeah, I was completely crushed. We've been married for nine years and together for ten. We've got three amazing kids and had built this whole life together. When I read those texts, I just lost it. I was a complete emotional wreck, trying to process how everything we had built was just falling apart. So, I decided I couldn't just sit on this. I needed to talk to her about it straight up. I asked her to step outside for a chat and laid it all out. Her first reaction? Total denial. She's like, you're out of your mind. There's no way I'd ever do something like that. But I was ready. I told her I had the screenshots, the proof, and it was time for her to just be honest. You know, she has this particular look she gets when she's caught in a big fat lie. And right then, she was practically wearing that look like a Halloween mask. From the messages I saw, she fessed up to messing around with one guy physically, and then there was some flirty stuff with another. That's as far as she would go. But in my head, I'm thinking, 
If she's copping to that, what else is there? What other secrets is she too embarrassed to spill? I've always been super clear with myself, and with her too, that cheating is a deal breaker. I used to say I'd drop her in a heartbeat if it ever happened. But now that I'm actually facing this mess, it's way harder than I ever thought it'd be. She's my wife. I meant every word of those vows I took. If I could just believe she was truly sorry and knew for sure this wouldn't happen again, I'd be willing to forgive. But how can I? The trust is shattered. Believing anything she says now just feels impossible. I've kind of put a pause on making any huge decisions until we give marriage counseling a shot. I'm leaning towards this mostly for the sake of our kids, but if I'm being totally honest with myself, I'm not 100% convinced it's the right move. It just blows my mind, you know? How can someone who swears up and down that they love you turn around and pull something like this? Since everything came out, she's been ticking all the boxes doing everything I've asked her to. But I'm stuck here wondering if that's ever going to be enough to patch things up. See, the thing is, I'm not one to just toss my relationship into the trash bin without a second thought. Not like it seems she did. I've been super careful about who I spill the beans to, thinking about the off chance I decide to stick things out with her. My family's already not exactly her fan club. And if they got wind of this, well, let's just say it wouldn't be pretty. But part of me, a big part, wishes I could just scream about all this from the highest point I can find, instead of feeling like I've got to keep it all under wraps. I'm all over the place emotionally right now, like a blender set on high without a lid. There are so many feelings happening all at once, and trying to figure out which one to actually listen to is like trying to catch smoke with your bare hands. Dropping all this here, I guess, is part vent, part plea for a bit of wisdom or guidance from anyone who's been in these shoes or even just has an outside perspective. I get that nobody else can make this call for me, but man, any sort of help in untangling this huge knot of emotions would be seriously appreciated. Big thanks in advance to anyone who takes a moment to weigh in. Story 3. My sister's got this 7-year-old kiddo who, well, still rocks diapers once in a while. It's not like an all-the-time thing, but he has his moments, you know? And he's got autism, which probably plays into this whole diaper deal. On my end, I've got a little squad of my own with a 9-year-old leading the pack and two munchkins trailing behind at 4 and 2. So my sister and her little dude are crashing with us for a bit. Her apartment's kind of in a mess because of a fire that went down a few floors up from hers. And to top it off, they found some gnarly black mold creeping around. And man, is it a scorcher outside these days. Last summer, my hubby decided to go all out and popped up this massive pool in our backyard. It's like we've turned into the neighborhood hotspot with all the kids diving in and out of our place to cool off. Their folks are pretty awesome too, lending a hand with keeping our yard looking nice and sometimes grilling up a storm. My sister and I, well, we've had our moments. Like, she's had some oddball requests for her son's meals or got iffy about me breastfeeding near him. But hey, we sorted all that out. Now here's where it gets a bit sticky. My nephew's been back to wearing diapers lately, and my sister's got this idea that our house should be a no-go zone until he's all about that underwear life again. I wasn't having any of it. I mean, if she's that worried about him feeling embarrassed, she could just keep him chilling upstairs. It's way too hot to keep all these kids cooped up inside away from the pool. They gotta have some fun without melting into puddles. My sister's getting all worked up because her son's feeling left out, especially since he can't splash around with his cousins. But here's the thing. I can't just put one kid's situation over the fun and safety of all the other kids, right? She's throwing around words like I'm not being understanding enough and that I should make special arrangements just for him. But I'm like, hold up, he's not my kid, and it's not like the other kids are going to make a big deal over his diaper situation. She's pretty upset with me, and my husband's kind of thinking maybe we could close off the pool for just family for a day or so. Makes me wonder, am I being unreasonable here? Story 4. My sister, who's 35, and she kind of sees herself as this top-notch housewife. She's got a couple of kids who are still in middle school, and she's all about that stay-at-home mom life, looking after them and her five dogs. Her hubby brings home the bacon, so she's totally dedicated to managing the house, whipping up meals, looking after the kids, you know, all that home stuff. Now, the thing my sister is super proud of is her cooking. She's always trying out new recipes and gets a real kick out of cooking for other folks. But here's the kicker. She's not exactly the culinary genius she thinks she is. Plus, her kitchen habits are, let's just say, not exactly up to code. We're talking hair everywhere because she never ties it back, hands that don't see the sink as often as they should, and, oh, the dogs are pretty much part of the kitchen crew. Our family always goes on about how amazing her food is, but honestly, just thinking about how it's made gives me the heebie-jeebies. I've gotten pretty good at dodging dinner invites, usually saying I'm slammed with work or not feeling peckish, which isn't a total lie given my job's pretty exhausting. 
So this one time she throws a dinner party to celebrate her husband's big job promotion, and it's one of those moments where saying no just isn't an option. Their place has this open plan vibe, so the kitchen and dining area are pretty much one big room, which means I had front row seats to the whole cooking show from my spot at the table. And man, it was a sight. Her hair was doing its thing, loose and all over the place, and she's wearing this massive knit sweater while she cooks. But it gets worse. I caught her doing the old finger licking trick after, uh, a quick scratch, then cuddling her dachshund right there in the kitchen. And just when I thought I'd seen it all, she plops the dog right onto the counter next to the cutting board to grab something, and the little guy starts going to town on the hamburger meat she left out. I was so grossed out, I spent the whole dinner trying not to look like I was about to lose my appetizer. Obviously, I didn't touch my food and just stuck to making chit-chat. She definitely picked up on it, though, so when my sister noticed I was just pushing my food around and not really eating, she hit me with the big question, why aren't you eating? At first, I tried to dodge it, throwing out excuses like, oh, I'm just not feeling all that hungry, you know, trying to keep things light. But eventually, the truth just kind of bubbled up, and I had to be real with her. I told her as gently as I could that the way she cooks is kind of yuck. Like, not to be mean, but it's not exactly clean cooking we're talking about here. I mentioned the whole deal with her letting her hair fly all over the place and dipping her fingers into the food without washing them first. Man, did that hit a nerve? My sister was totally taken aback. She just started crying right there and then, telling me how hard she works on these meals, and here I was, calling them dirty. She even threw out there that maybe I was just jealous because I don't have a family of my own to cook for, seeing as I'm flying solo without kids. That's when I kind of lost my patience, and told her I was done with this conversation, that there was no way I was going to eat food that made me feel uncomfortable, and I just left. Her and her husband didn't let it go, though. They blew up my phone all night, telling me I was way out of line, making a mountain out of a molehill about the food situation and that I really hurt their feelings. They kept saying the food was fine, no hair, tasted great, but how would I even know since I didn't try it? And yeah, I do feel bad for making her upset, but she asked me straight up why I wasn't eating, and I just gave her the honest answer. Just to clear things up, it was just the three of us there, me, my sister, and her husband. No big family dinner or anything. So now I'm sitting here wondering, was I really the bad guy for just speaking my truth? Last story. Am I the jerk for not helping my sister with her sick kids while she took her husband to the ER? My sister, who's 30, and her hubby have this big family with five kids. Now me? I'm 22 and totally not into the whole kid scene. Like, hanging out with kids just doesn't do it for me. I pretty much keep my distance from my nieces and nephews. And that's totally by choice. I'm all good with it. But here's the drama. The entire family, all seven of them, caught the coronavirus. Which is rough because it's been hitting them hard for a whole week. So... Her husband got super sick, like dangerously dehydrated, and needed to rush to the ER. My sister calls me up, hoping I'd watch their five kids while she took him. I was like, no way, and suggested she either call an ambulance or hit up her mother-in-law to help out instead. I mean, those sounded like solid plans to me. She tells me she doesn't want to bug her mother-in-law and that they can't swing the cost of an ambulance. That got me wondering, why is she cool with dumping five sick kids on me but thinks asking her mother-in-law for a lift is too much? She said she was feeling rough too and needed a break. I wasn't having it, so I just hung up and went about my day. Then, out of nowhere, my mom, who's way out across the country, calls me up angry, saying I should have stepped up to watch my sister's kids. But come on, that ask is way out there. I've never even babysat a single kid before, let alone changed a diaper. How am I supposed to handle five sick kids, three of whom are still in diapers? In the end, the mother-in-law took the husband to the ER, and now... My sister's going around telling anyone who'll listen that I'm the worst. But here's the thing. We barely even talk since she had her kids. And she didn't help me out when I needed it. Like when I was moving into my college dorm. So I'm sitting here thinking, why should I be expected to jump in and help with such a huge favor when she hasn't been there for the small stuff? Am I really the bad guy for saying no to watching my sister's kids?